Uh, hello everybody, this is uh, a video on reliability. It is actually the third time I've had to film this because I've accidentally deleted it twice. Um, it's not a particularly long video, but it is actually quite an important one because reliability is one, one of the most one of the most key important terms. Is that the right way to say that? Um, <clears throat> Um, but when we talk about reliability, we are talking about how consistent a measure is. So you need to know what we mean by consistent, and you also kind of need to know what we mean by measure as well. A measure is whatever form of measurement you are using to, you know, trying to get certain data, right? So um, a measure can be measuring something physical, like ruler. But in psychology, you tend to use what's called psychometric measures. So a metric or so a measurement of a psychological characteristic. So I can't use a ruler to measure your determination, your motivation, your grit, your uh, achievement. I, you know, I, I, will, I would use a, um, a psychometric measure, which is usually a questionnaire of some kind to be able to actually measure this. So what we're looking at is not how valid that measurement is, not how accurate that measure is, but does it give you a consistent reading? Does it give you a consistent um, uh, kind of output, if you will? Um, for example, uh, oh, hello, Bella. Have you come help say hello? Okay. Um, for example, I have taken three IQ tests in my life. One when I was about 17, one when I was about 23, and one when I was about 29. Right, so significantly, significant periods apart. Now we could look at how valid that is, right? We could look at how, how accurate it is, right? And that's when we look at validity in, a, in another screen. But my question to you is, how reliable was that measure? That measure across a 12 year period, three times I took that measure, gave me the exact same IQ every single time. Right, 120, yeah, it's no big deal. Yeah, hey, I didn't say I was a hero, but I am. So it's reliable in this case. So as I said, if, if validity is how accurate a measure is, reliability refers to how consistent or, or how similar uh, that measure is going to get. So um, uh, we've really covered this, and I think oh, I've read a couple. So IQ is a form of measurement, for example. Questionnaire is a form of measurement. Even interviews are a form of measurement. Um, <clears throat> but the, I, I guess one of the key things to, to take into account here is that um, by consistency of data we're talking about both quantitative and qualitative so if I were to give you an interview now say the exact same questions ask you the exact same questions if I give you the same interview in six months time are you going to say the same thing am I measuring so a measure can be quantitative or qualitative um, now there are two ways to assess reliability um, and obviously reliability is something we want to achieve, you know, oh, for example, for example, if I went upstairs and got my weighing scales, if I stood on my weighing scales now and it read out, I don't know, let's say 80 kilos, I'm not that weight, I'm quite over that weight actually, but uh, if it were to weigh out 80 kilos, for example, if I stepped on it, stepped off it and then stepped back on it again and it said 62 kilos, Okay, fantastic, right? Um, I've clearly lost 18 kilos somewhere, but that wouldn't be a reliable measure because it's not the same or similar. So there's two ways in which you would assess reliability, test, retest reliability and inter-rater reliability as well. And the first one is, is really quite simple because the definition is somehow in the name. You test somebody, right? And then you retest them a significant period of time afterwards and see if you have the same or similar scores um, from that measure. Um, 
And from that, you could see if actually what you are measuring is consistent. And that is pretty much what test retest is. Imagine you gave someone an IQ test and they score 114, a bit embarrassing, uh, 114 on it. You wait a significant period of time. And that significant period of time is super important, by the way. And I won't tell you why, but hopefully you'll be able to figure out why. Um, but... Um, once enough time has gone, you give them the test again, and on the retest, they get 116. Now, 116 is not 114, but I would argue it's similar. Remember, for you to achieve reliability, it is the same or similar score that you are afterwards. All right, so, and that's pretty much what I say down the bottom. Interrater reliability, on the other hand, Interrater reliability is essentially done, and it's worth noting this down, is that it's done mainly through observations, and you are looking for um, reliability between observers. Hold on a second. Uh, scratching at the table. Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. Stop this now. Stop this nonsense. No, stop this nonsense. Huh? I know, she's sticking her tail in my face now. Um, um, so, interrater reliability... Thank you, Bella. Um, so, interrater reliability is essentially done through observations, um, and it's usually done with two or more observers observing the same thing, right? So... Um, <clears throat> two or more observers are watching the same thing, you want to know how similar their observations are. Are they seeing the same things? Are they coding the same things? Are they interpreting the same things? And so on a coding scheme, uh, you would no they would note down how many times behaviors have occurred, and then you would compare them at the end. Now, the most important thing to note here, and I don't actually know if I do talk about it. Yes, I do. God, I'm good. Towards the end of the observations, observers will compare results, and they'll do a, a type of statistical test which actually determines how similar their results were. And this test goes essentially from zero to one, right? And this is called a correlation coefficient. So what you want to achieve, what you want to achieve is a consistency of at least plus 0.8. I cannot tell you how important it is for you to note this down. You want observers to achieve between them watching the same thing. Say they're watching people on a beach, for example, and they're seeing how many sandcastles are being built and blah, 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 and how many people are dunking people in the water or, you know, I don't know, weeing in the, in the sea or something. I don't really know what you're observing. Um, but you want them to agree to, to uh, agree on plus 0.8. At its core, by the way, what that basically means is they're agreeing 80% of the time. Oh, I realize I'm drinking beer whilst doing a, a screencast, by the way, but this is research methods and you know, we all have our vices to try to get through it. So a correlation coefficient of plus 0.8 would be considered reliable. It would be considered similar. So essentially what that means is your two observers ha have actually agreed 80% of the time. The other thing you may be asked to do in the exam is to identify how to improve reliability, right? So what this basically means is how do you improve the consistency? If it's through observations, you want to improve the the comparison. You want to improve the similarity of the observations. And you would do that by, uh, let's see, um, having a clear coding scheme. You'd do that by training your observers on what exactly they should be interpreting. When, when it says, for example, when it says on the piece of paper, um, uh, like you're observing people on the beach and it says, don't they, like, go into water, you have to agree with your observer, what are we actually counting as going in the water? 
if they put their foot in, is that in the water or do they have to go full head under or waist? So you basically have to agree. And that would be one way in which you would improve the consistency of the results because you and your two, you and you and your two observers, for example, are both agreeing on um, what it is you're actually observing. In this case, your two observers are two bottles of beer. Um, how do you improve the consistency of lab experiments? Well, you 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 standardize your procedures. You standardize your procedures so that the the uh, procedure is the same for everybody. Um, and this is the sort of question that you're going to get now. You, if you're first year, you will not be able to answer this question because you probably don't know what a content analysis is. But if you are a second year and you know what content analysis is, or you have at least been taught content analysis, you should be able to answer this question. Essentially, what this is looking for is how do you um, how do you uh, assess for the reliability of a, a content analysis? Um, so you would do the content analysis again let somebody else do it for example and then you'd look to see if there was a 0.8 consistency between you and the previous person um, and that would be four marks contextualized to this example so that is really it to be honest um, the main things i guess i would want you to take away would be test retest reliability um, test retest reliability um, interrated reliability knowing but specifically also how to improve reliability in any research methods that they give you that's really the key thing and that's the thing i haven't really gone over because it's something you have to be able to do in the exam and it's a, and I, I can't prepare you for that that's something you need to be able to be prepared so if i were to say to you how do you improve the reliability of an observation i would want you to be able to contextualize that right so probably the most key skill but we've covered the basics that is it for reliability